It is such a funny and such a dumb lie where he was like, every legal scholar wanted me to overturn Roe v. Wade. Every legal scholar from both sides. I'm saying it. Let's get to the real news, okay? Donald Trump. Donald Trump says abortion rights should be decided by individual U.S. states. That's right. He came out of the gate swinging after... Donald Trump, or at least his team, leaked a, a possible federal abortion ban at, uh, what was it, 12 weeks? Uh, he has now gone back on that and has come out with a different approach. Uh, that, I assume, was a little bit of a test to see how, the public would, uh, see how the public would react. I guess they didn't like the reactions of the public, so now Trump is trying to hit this whole, like, states' rights for abortion argument again, which is really stupid. But to be fair, there's not really anything he can do about it. He's just desperately trying to, uh, m you know, massage the narrative as uh, he, he has these two conflicting forces within the party, within the Republican Party, two conflicting forces within the Republican Party, the 30% uh, evangelical Protestant base that is like really excited about criminalizing abortion unconditionally. And then the rest of the country that says that that is unhinged and insane. Huh. Everybody understands that obviously this is a deeply unpopular and undesirable agenda. And that uh, everyone also knows that it is entirely the fault of the Republican Party. So they have no out for it. Let's take a look. Well, Trump has said that abortion rights expected to be a key issue in November's presidential election should be decided by individual states. Mr. Trump said he was responsible for the 2022 Supreme Court decision ending a federal right to the procedure, adding that in his view, abortion was now where everybody wanted it to be from a legal standpoint. He, this is also my favorite take because it's such a stupid lie. It is such a funny and such a dumb lie uh, where he was like, every legal scholar wanted me to overturn Roe v. Wade. Every legal scholar from both sides, which absolutely not, okay? <laughs> All the way from every part of the Federalist Society, there's some woke ones in there, folks, and they all wanted it. He didn't specify a gestational week at which he would ban abortion, but he said he supported exceptions for rape, incest, and to protect the life of the mother. Many people have asked me what my position is on abortion and abortion rights, especially since I was proudly the person responsible for the ending of something that all legal scholars, both sides, wanted and, in fact, that's so funny. All legal scholars, both sides, they all wanted it. Bro, he looks so bad, by the way. God damn, son. What the f happened? He looks like he looks like he burnt a little too hard. He is now officially looking like the rotisserie chicken. He has never looked more like the rotisserie chicken that's been out too long under that lamp, possibly at Mar-a-Lago. They're serving it than this very moment. God damn, dude. It's too much. It's way too much. I demanded be ended. Roe v. Wade. They wanted it ended. It must be remembered that the Democrats are the radical ones on this position because they support abortion up to and even beyond the ninth month. The concept of having an abortion in the later months and even execution after birth, and that's exactly what it is. The baby is born, the baby is executed after birth, <laughs> is unacceptable. And almost everyone agrees with that. My view is now that we have abortion where everybody wanted it from a legal... They're, they're killing the baby beyond abortion. Post-birth abortion, folks. It's called execution, but the Democrats call it post-birth abortion. It's like, no, that's called a murder. That's a different word for that. Um, he's still running this line. It ain't gonna work, big dog. Okay? This whole... Look... This whole idea of like hypothetically Democrats want to kill your children only works before you actually take legislative action. Once people take legislative action, everyone is going to hyper focus on the action and the impact of said legislative action, right? Republicans can always get away with having incredibly cool, cruel policy prescriptions as long as they don't actually act out on them. When we are living in the post Roe v. Wade abolition 
uh, or oppose Roe v. Wade decision overturning a pros, uh, overturning a Roe v. Wade. Everybody understands what's going on. Everybody understands who's responsible for it. Okay, if you live in a red state, if you live in like Texas, for example, and you hear stories about you know mothers who are uh, who wanted to have a, a, a third child, let's say, and they have an ectopic pregnancy and they cannot, uh, they do not have a viable fetus and they can't get this life-saving medical procedure, everybody sees that. Everybody recognizes exactly what's going on there, and nobody cares about, like, possibly the, the fact that Democrats want to execute babies or whatever, okay? And when I say everybody, I'm incorporating Republicans into the equation as well, because while many Republicans before the Roe v. Wade overturning would have possibly fantasized about, like, how far the Democrats were going— <coughs> how far the, the Democratic Party was uh, wanting to go with, like, forcible abortions for every woman or whatever, now they have to deal with the very likely reality that, like, their daughters might have to get an abortion and they can't get an abortion now. From a standpoint, the states will determine by vote or legislation or perhaps both, and whatever they decide must be the law of the land, in this case, the law of the state. Many states... Laugh as much as you want. Nobody really cares about women unless they think it will quite literally affect their close ones. No, for sure. That's precisely what I'm saying, as a matter of fact. Republicans did not care about this issue or cared about it in the opposite direction until it became a reality. And now they're recognizing like, oh shit, maybe this wasn't a great idea. And by that, I mean people who historically voted Republican, let's say, white college educated voters in the suburbs that historically voted for the Republican Party that never really considered how devastating it may be to shut off access to a medical procedure that is safe. It is a decision that should be left up to the doctor and the patient. Uh, putting the state in between that all of a sudden made this theoretical reality a very real one that will impact them, their loved ones, possibly in the future, or even now. That's it. By the way, you basically just described conservative thinking. It's like kind of sad, but it is exactly how conservatives operate. The way they operate is it doesn't matter to me unless it directly impacts me. Okay? That's why Dick Cheney was fine with LGBT rights to a certain degree because his daughter is a lesbian. Oftentimes, when you have a loved one when you're a Republican, you do not demonstrate the capacity for, for sympathy or empathy until, until it personally impacts you, okay? There are plenty, depending on how stupid they are, that will still demonstrate cognitive dissonance. That's why you have a lot of second-generation Latino voters who vote Republican and advocate for staunch, strict white nativist immigration policies not realizing that they are the sons and daughters of undocumented migrants for example okay that's why you have a lot of as as long as it as long as you can mystify the impact of specific types of legislation you will still have a lot of republicans that vote for policies that hurt them as long as there's a dream for example that you can uh, you, you can massage into the minds of many Americans. What do I mean by this? Plenty of middle class and below working class Americans that vote for the Republican Party do so with the underlying assumption, okay, that they think they are going to make it, that they are, they too will be millionaires one day. That's why they need the tax cuts, okay? They don't realize that those tax cuts are not beneficial for them. Those tax cuts are beneficial for the wealthy, which they will never be, okay? It is one of the most prescient takes of all time from uh, the author of Grapes of Wrath, the idea that uh, socialism will never work in America. I mean, he, he uh, wrote about the, the Great Depression extensively, um, uh, Joseph Steinbeck. The, the idea that uh, socialism will never work in America because the working class in the United States of America do not see themselves as an exploited proletariat, but temporarily embarrassed millionaires. John Steinbeck? Oh, it's not Joseph Steinbeck. I, I'm so used to calling everybody Joseph Robinette. Joseph Steinbeck. Joseph Robinette Steinbeck. See, I f*** up sometimes, okay? Anyway.
weeks will be different. Many will have a different number of weeks, or some will have more conservative than others, and that's what they will be. At the end of the day, this is all about the will of the people. You must follow your heart or, in many cases, your religion or your faith. Do what's right for your family and do what's right for yourself. Do what's right for your children. Do what's right for our country and vote. So important to vote. At the end of the day, it's all about... This is kind of, this is kind of lame, too, by the way. Just vote. Go out and vote. Folks, please go out and vote. Okay, bro. Okay, Democrat. Kind of sounding like Hillary Clinton a little bit, huh? What's happening there? But will of the people. That's where we are right now, and that's what we want, the will of the people. Well, Michael Scherer, a national political reporter with The Washington Post, gave me his reaction. Well, he's definitely been leaning in that direction for a number of months. There were a couple kerfuffles during the primary in which he said similar things about not wanting a federal ban or his campaign did, about... Uh, of Republican voters needing to respect the will of the people. And then he would back off of that because he was in a Republican primary. This is really a political move. He's got an enormous headwind. And actually, you know, Republicans running statewide for Senate have an enormous headwind. Abortion has really motivated Democratic voters. And he's trying to uh, dampen down that issue. He knows it's something that, uh, you know, really threatens to defeat him in November. And he's trying to take away the idea that as president, he would push for a federal ban, even though during his term as president, he did push for a 20 week ban. Uh, and, and members of his party are going to continue to push for a ban. And he's previously said he would work something out. Um, this won't change what the Biden campaign's doing. They're going to spend, you know, 200, 300 million dollars on advertising, uh, you know, saying that the reason in a lot of these key swing states, you no longer have the same access to abortion is uh, is President Trump and Roe and probably uh, surfacing some of his old comments in which he did call for basically a ban on abortion. I mean, at one point, and he took this back, he even called for um, prosecution of, of women who had abortions. Um, so th this doesn't take the issue off the table, but he's hoping it will reduce the severity of it for himself. And I, I know it's very early because this statement has only just come out, but is it likely to... So the reason why he's doing the is a state's rights issue is because he is trying to at least secure, like win back some of the voters that he lost to the Democratic Party because of the abortion stuff in purple states. Because like red states, they're like, uh, they have their, their, they have their own, uh, you know, they have their own perspective on the matter. And he's trying to say like to the blue states, you know, you can keep your abortion if you want it. He's trying to desperately massage out of this, uh, this, this devastating predicament for the future prospects of the Republican party. This is something that I have, uh, brought up quite a bit as soon as Roe v. Wade was overturned. And this is at the heart of this is at the heart of the the Republican Party's major uh, major issue to begin with. It's like it's one that transcends beyond Donald Trump. Donald Trump is a manifestation of it, though. He is a perfect human representation of like this genuine problem because Republicans have gotten so successful at meeting their agendas and and genuinely pushing forward with their ideology that is oftentimes incredibly restrictive that they are a victim to their own success. Yes, the dog caught the car, if you will. Dog chases the car, but what happens when the dog catches the car? You know what I mean? Huh. So there, there, is a, there is a real problem within the Republican Party, and they are trying to desperately either move away from this issue, never really talk about it at all, or, or try to, you know, reframe the narrative that, like, no, no, no. People wanted this, actually. Enough people actually wanted this. That's not the case. The overwhelming majority of Americans, as a matter of fact, did not want this. So much so that they despise the Supreme Court because they recognize how undemocratic it is. This is not the will of the people at all. There will be political punishments. Those political punishments have come down already in the, uh, you know, ineffective midterm election that happened for the Republican Party, they still obviously took over the, uh, they still obviously took over the House of Representatives, but even then there's another party within the, uh, there's another issue within the House of Representatives, which is another Republican uh, principle, the principle of obstruction, um, the perma-obstructionist attitude that 
many factions within the Republican Party are cooking their own agendas in, in some ways and making them look very stupid and in a state of disarray permanently. That's why you had the speaker drama that occurred. That's why Mike Johnson personally is still experiencing some of those issues as well. Given the way that the, the, the Republican Party is structured, hard to win those voters back when they're middle class kids can't even buy Plan B safely over the counter. Yes. You know, reduce opposition from potential supporters. So I, I think it's a complicated question. I don't think we know the answer. Uh, you know, the, the, there is going to be some backlash from the right, from his conservative evangelical supporters who have long supported federal. Uh, I don't think there will be. I'm going to be honest. I don't think there will be a major backlash from the evangelicals. I think they're like pretty happy. Legislation restricting abortion. He's basically ruling that out here. He has previously supported federal legislation. Now, whether those people stay home or vote third party is, is you know, an open question. They probably don't. Um, I don't think this has, you know, it, it, like it, it's a matter of degree. It doesn't change completely the conversation. If you look at a lot of the states where this presidential election is going to be decided, Georgia, North Carolina, Michigan, Wisconsin, Arizona, abortion is very much a live issue on the state level. The only reason it's a live issue on the state level is uh, that Roe v. Wade was overturned and, and President Trump is claiming credit for overturning Roe v. Wade. So it's, it doesn't take him out of the conversation about abortion. And I think uh, Biden will be able to go to voters and say, look, the reason you're concerned that you or your daughter or your wife are going to have trouble getting uh, abortion access uh, right now is is that President Trump did this and, and President Biden is running on a platform of restoring Roe v. Wade uh, uh, on the federal level. This is what Donald Trump said this morning about the thorny issue of abortion. So um, here's also a little bit of clapback from Donalde. Okay, here's also another. Here is also another clapback from Donalde against Lindsey Graham and others in the party. Trump on tr True Social takes a swipe. This is from Jill Coven, the national political reporter for the Associated Press, Associated Press covering uh, Donald Trump's latest uh, True Social post. Says Trump on True Social takes a swipe at Lindsey Graham, South Carolina, and others who have been pushing for a national abortion ban. People like Lindsey Graham that are unrelenting are handing the Democrats their dream of the House, Senate, and perhaps even the presidency, he writes. Senator Lindsey Graham is doing a great disservice to the Republican Party and to our country, he wrote, adding, We cannot let our country suffer any further damage by losing elections on an issue that should have always been decided by the states and now will be. Okay? That's what's going on here. He is reading the room, recognizing that the room stinks, okay, seeing how bad it looks, and trying to retriangulate the message, but I don't think it's a salvageable message. I don't think there is a way you can message out of this, because <sighs> Americans are not very, Americans are not very smart, as you all know, okay? Americans are very dumb, and because they're very dumb, there are moments of clarity where they can't be swayed away from their opinion with complex thinking, okay? What do I mean by this? What I mean is, what you see is what you get. They know that abortion is restricted in red states. They know some of the complications that come from that. They fear that their loved ones might be impacted by it. So it doesn't really matter when you go with this theoretical states' rights approach because it already happened. If it hadn't happened, then you could you know, massage the narrative. You can say stuff like, oh yeah, Democrats want to kill your children. Democrats want to come to your house and like abort your baby. Okay. But when it, when something does happen, well, they're focused on the thing that's happening in front of their eyes, right? We are no longer at hypotheticals at this point. We've moved beyond the hypotheticals at this point, right? Here's Lindsey Graham replying to him. I respectfully disagree. This is what I think sparked the uh, Trump drama the girls are fighting. I respectfully disagree with President Trump's statement that abortion is a state's right issue. Dobbs does not require that conclusion legally, and the pro-life movement has always been about the well-being of the unborn child, not geography. Now, Lindsey Graham is, is at least somewhat logically consistent here, which is a weird string of words that I never thought I would say, but he's technically right. If you think it's murder, then it's not about states' rights. You want to stop murder. Why the fuck would you be like, yeah, you can do as many murders as you want in California. However, there is an extent to the logic that these guys apply. 
Because the real ones, the real rabid, psychopathic, Christo-fascist weirdos, the evangelical Protestants that think abortion is definitely murder because life begins at conception, also want to stop in vitro fertilization. They are the ones who also want to stop abortion permanently. They want to make sure that you, that you criminalize abortion, even in instances of incest, incest even in instances of rape, even in instances of pedophilic rape, right? Because guess what? A life is still a life. That's still a murder. That's still a murder. You're still killing a child. Now, of course, in many Republican states, all of a sudden, they created carve-outs. So maybe, so, so I guess it's not always murder? How did that happen? Why is it not murder if life begins at conception? When the sperm fertilizes the egg. If the sperm fertilizes the egg and that equals life, as is the operational logic for many of these weird Christians, okay, then all of a sudden, why are you building carve-outs for rape and incest? Because if you were logical, if you did truly believe it, you would have no carve-outs because a life is a life, no matter what. But it seems like they're re-triangulating their messaging because they recognize how bad it looks, okay? They see how bad it looks. They know how bad it is. Lindsey Graham is trying to... Uh, trying to defend this position, but Trump is the correct person in this uh, in this situation. Trump is actually reading the room and recognizing that, like, we need a new way to signal to the crowds that we are not going to be as restrictive. You guys are this up. The state's rights only rationale today runs contrary to the American consensus that would limit light term abortions and will age about as well as the Dred Scott decision. The science is clear. A child of 15 weeks is well-developed and capable of feeling pain. I will continue to advocate that there should be a national minimum standard limiting abortion at 15 weeks because the child is capable of feeling pain with exceptions of rape, incest, life, or the mother. See, I didn't even read down to this point, but here, here, there you go. He's still inconsistent. He's still inconsistent. Okay. I'm going to quote tweet this. If life begins at conception and abortion is murder, why are people like Lindsay, some murders are okay? It's because they don't actually believe it. They just want to limit medical. <sighs> of course he thinks some murders are okay. School shootings specifically? No, dude. No, that's not it. Of course, some murders are okay. Just look at the hair. Uh, they're, just look at their record on the death penalty. No, but there is no... No, this is an innocent life, though, okay? That's different. It's because they don't actually believe it. They just want to limit medical decisions women can make. And they full-blown ban doesn't have enough support. You can see them try to hit the specific it can feel pain aspect, even if it's bullshit. They lost the religious philosophical debate against abortion and are trying to appeal on the facts and logic now. No, they, they knew that they had lost the religious uh, uh, aspect. That's why Ben Shapiro, a religious person, even though obviously Judaism uh, allows abortion, encourages abortion, right? Ben Shapiro, being a Christian lapdog, uh, was advocating for abortion not on religious grounds, even though he is a very religious conservative. He was always advocating for abortion from a logical ground, right? Because they realized that that actually tests much better. That actually focus groups much better with a broader audience than just being like life begins at conception. I'm a religious nutter and I want to enforce rules upon you at the federal level, at the state level. I want the state to enforce my standards of, of uh, existing upon you. I think it goes beyond limiting women. I really think it goes to the conservative ideology about who's allowed to have sex and why. Sex is only for procreation and that's it. Yes, it is that. And a lot of these people don't actually care about abortion rights. Either way, they can afford to pay their way out of the bind. Yes. Okay. Anyway. However, until we achieve this goal, the least we can do is provide anesthesia to an unborn child facing abortion at 15 weeks because they can feel pain. Therefore, I will be introducing new legislation requiring abortion providers to administer anesthesia to an unborn child of 15 weeks because they're capable. Bro, he's trying to murder the people that are getting abortions, okay? 
He's like, if a mother wants to get an abortion, we will murder you by pumping you full of anesthesia, even if you don't need it. Okay. I care more about, I care more about the life of the hypothetical child that might be born. It's a 50, 50 chance anyway, than the life of the carrier. It is common medical practice to administer anesthesia to operate on an unborn child at 15 weeks to save their life. This is further red tape. This is like a trap law, okay? Trying to pass legislation that will register anesthesia at every abortion is just another way to try and further restrict abortion, okay? That's it. Now you need an anesthesiologist at the abortion clinic. Ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous bill. 47 or 50 European nations have national limits on abortion between 12 and 15 weeks. This is the civilized world's position. That's funny. What else do they got in 47 of the 50 European nations? But they got a lot more. They, I like that he's recognizing that that's the civilized world. The only time he's ever bringing up Europe. In every single one of those European countries, in every single one of those European countries, they also have socialized medicine. They are civilized in that front. In every single one of those European countries, if you were to get a, uh, an abortion beyond those limits, beyond the 12 to 15 weeks limits, okay, you can still get it when it's a medical necessity, which is the only way that you can get an abortion po uh, after the first trimester in America anyway. There are no third trimester abortions that are recreational, okay? That's not a real thing. Is just a made-up fantasy by Republicans. And as I repeat, oftentimes, the unfortunate reality is that a big chunk of American political commentary revolves around something that a guy just made up. And now we have to deal with it. Sorry, I made up this thing that is not a real problem. I've decided that it is a real problem, and it's really scary because it scares me, this thing that I made up in my mind. And now you have to act like it's actually happening, and now you have to address the fear that I have. That's it. It's so many things, so many issues that drive political discourse in this country are just issues that a guy made up, okay? Immigrants are doing mass rapes is not a real thing. There is no empirical evidence for this. The only empirical evidence actually suggests that immigrants, undocumented migrants, are responsible for less crime per capita than natural-born U.S. citizens. But a guy made that up, and it feels like it could be real to a lot of people. So now we have to legislate against that fear. Abortion is no different. Okay? Holy moly. Let's hear what Sky News has to say. Under my leadership, the Republican Party will always support the creation of strong, thriving, and healthy American families. We want to make it easier for... A few states technically do allow abortion up until birth. New Jersey and Michigan are two of them. There is no state in the continental United States of America where you can get a no-holds-barred abortion up to the, the third trimester. You are wrong. In those states, you still need a medical reason for it. Okay? You are wrong. I already factored this in when I said you cannot get an abortion in the third trimester in any state without a medical reason. It is a medical reason that you need to be able to get it. Okay? When you say technically allowed, you are describing what is normal, okay? When people say legal at any stage, okay, elective abortion in the United States, that does not mention the medical necessity, okay? That's it. There is no state in the United States of America where you can literally just go, hey, man, I kind of want to aborabo. Seems pretty pog. I love getting abortions. It feels good as it feels good as for my ovaries to get a third trimester of Borobo, okay? There is not a human being on the planet that is like, yeah, I loved carrying this fetus to full-blown viability, and now I am getting a funsies abortion. That's why Republicans have to either make it up or find like an extreme edge case. 
People do not understand how difficult it is to be pregnant. People do not understand that. Many men definitely do not understand the complications that come along with being pregnant. Not just being pregnant, but also, not uh, like when I talk about complications in this regard, I'm not just talking about like, oh, it feels bad because like I'm gaining weight or my belly grew and I don't like that. I'm talking like it, it can be a life or death situation. Unfortunately, unfortunately, for the United States of America, especially where our healthcare is absolutely dog shit across the board, specifically when it comes to maternal mortality, mortality during pregnancy, pregnancies can be a life or death situation. Like we're still living in ancient Rome or something. You know what I mean? It's crazy. It's awesome. It's great. How many women did you endanger yet? What do you mean endanger? What the fuck are you saying? You are being transphobic. What? Oh, oh, stop, please. Wrong. Trans men do ass. What? Stop. Stop. I know you're memeing, but like people do take this shit. The people do legitimately believe this. Okay. Yeah. Here's the other part. Only two to 3% of all U S abortions happen after the second trimester. And typically those are really fucking sad situations. Where the parents have to make an impossible call. I saw that shit firsthand when I shadowed an antepartum unit for pregnancy with complications. And every time a termination call had to be made in the third trimester, it was heartbreaking and traumatizing. Exactly. By the third trimester, you've like bought a crib. Okay. You've bought clothes for the baby. You're excited to have the baby. You've like picked out a name. You know the gender of the child. You know what I mean? You're excited at the prospect of having a child. You can't even do this medical procedure now. It's insane. Insane. My trans friend got an abortion. Wait, what? You are being transphobic. I'm not. Trans men get abortion. My trans friend got an abortion. Dude, I'm sorry. Oh my God. Am I effing again? What the f I, uh, I hope I hope I get raptured during this process. Okay. My stream got effed during this process and it's objectively a good thing because i'm going to lose my mind guys guys gals embies shut the fuck up okay jesus christ if you think it's transphobic of me not to consistently not to consistently factor in the very very like the eight cases historically of trans men getting abortions okay because in order for a trans man to be able to be pregnant, not saying that they can't, okay? But in order for a trans man to be pregnant, they have to stop taking HRT, okay? So shut the fuck up. It is such a phenomenally, phenomenally unique set of circumstances that like constantly being like, no, 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 you have to talk about this. You have to talk about this. And not the tens of millions of people that we're talking about right now, but the one person, the one guy that gets a Rolling Stones article written about him. You're out of your mind, okay? Shut up! Jesus Christ! Yes, I'm transphobic, I guess, if that's what makes me transphobic. It's insane, brother or sister. This is a boomer take, babe. No, it's not. It is not a boomer take. God damn. Some of you need to... Just get out of your, your Discord servers. Holy shit. It's like, no, you have to have this conversation centering it around me and my own personal uh, situation here. Like, just shut up. Shut up. <laughs> shut the fuck up. You're just too permanently online to think that this is like prescient. It is a complete derailment. You will win zero people with this take. You are not advocating for it. trans Sis, doesn't matter. You are not advocating for trans rights when you hyper-focus on trans men getting abortions, okay? I'm sorry. You're not. You are not advocating for trans rights when you spear dick that narrative into this conversation. Shut your ass up, okay? Jesus Christ, it's so niche, dude. Calm down. No, you just want to be heard. You're, you you want to be like, me, 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 me. You're not, what, what do you think? Is this, a, is this a really big issue? Is this a genuinely massive issue? In the trans community, are trans men constantly getting pregnant and getting abortions? Is that what's going on? And they're like, we have to, we have to be, uh, we have to be incorporated into the abortion rights uh, conversation. Because I've never met a trans man that's been like, no, li listen, like this is a massive problem. Actually, we have to talk about this. You are wrong. I don't think you are transphobic, but pre HRT trans men get abortions. Wait, what? Oh my god. Oh my god. I'm gonna die. Oh. 
It's not niche. Just admit that that was a transphobic take. If that's a transphobic take, I'm transphobic. Okay? I'm transphobic. It is niche. You're delusional for thinking it's not niche. The problem, the problem is, given the numbers, okay, given the numbers, because there aren't that many trans people, a lot of trans issues are niche to begin with. But, we, but there are issues that directly pertain to trans people that are written specifically to exclude trans people from living in society, okay? Being like, no, you have to talk about like pre-HRT trans men or pre-HRT or, or just like trans men that do take HRT or whatever the f And like how important this is to the abortion conversation is delusional, okay? Jesus Christ, shut the f up. I will argue this take. Yes, you dumbass, I can't go to the OBGYN. I have to go to the women's health clinic. I desperately want to have a kid, but I'm scared of how the medical system treats me already. Wait, what? Oh, oh my God. I think a lot of people genuinely, genuinely think that when I'm talking about issues, I'm talking to them and them only. Okay. They think that like I'm speaking only to their needs and only to their desires and not the massive amount of people that are not only never thinking about trans people, trans men, trans women, whatever, but like specifically also when they do think about trans people, they have really bad thoughts, okay? You have to remove yourself from this conversation. You are talking to a trans man. I don't care. I know. God damn it. Just take the L. Oh my God. I hate how hyper online this argument is. There is a reason why. Oh my God. I'm going to die. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. We're not, we're not getting stun locked here. Okay. Take a day off. Take a deep breath. Come back when your brain is like. Mm. holy fuck just take the l when i win the debate with the streamer as a trans man i will be able to i will i will advance uh trans rights in in the most pro-trans community online when one of the largest pro-trans communities online this is how we fix it okay you already accounted for this in your take originally because it's most men don't understand meaning there's already a carve out for trans men slash uterus havers in this convo exactly nobody is saying that trans men can't get pregnant okay I, I literally understand that. I have explained it before. But it is a very niche part of this discussion. Okay? I hate this. I have also been incredibly consistent on this issue. Okay? I've said I've been incredibly consistent on this issue. Like when Anna Kasparian brings this point up and like loses her mind about like birthing persons or whatever the f discourse... I say it's a simple distraction from the broader anti-trans legislation that's being passed. This is not a real issue at all. This is not a serious, it is not a serious part of the conversation. It might be serious to you, okay? But like advocacy for uh, not restricting abortion access to anyone that needs it is going to already fix your problem to a certain degree, okay? Stop being fucking weird. Policing people who have the same beliefs as you over mining phrasing slash issues, not including one group in your people and language at one time is so ridiculous. I know. It's really fucking annoying. And especially when you're a 42 month subscriber, it's like additionally fucking annoying because you're missing the forest for the trees. It is inherently a reactionary way to, to, to approach the subject matter. It's coming from a place of entitlement. Ay, ay, ay. Let's continue. Mothers and families have babies, not harder. That includes supporting the availability of fertility treatments like IVF in every state in America, like the overwhelming majority of Americans, including the vast majority of Republicans, conservatives, Christians, and pro-life Americans. I strongly support the availability of IVF for couples who are trying to have a precious baby. What could be more beautiful or better than that? Today, I'm pleased that the Alabama legislature has acted very quickly. They're beautiful babies, and that's what we are. IVF is an important part of that, and our great Republican... What the f*** is going on today, man? What is happening today? What is happening? So fucking annoying. Especially at the top of the hour when there's a three-minute ad break. The party will always be with you in your quest for the ultimate joy in life. Many people have asked me what my position is on abortion and abortion rights, especially since I was proudly the person responsible for the ending of something that all legal scholars, both sides, wanted and, in fact, demanded. 
be ended. Roe v. Wade. They wanted it ended. It must be remembered that the Democrats are the radical ones on this position because they support abortion up to and even beyond the ninth month. The concept of having an abortion in the later months and even execution after birth, and that's exactly what it is, the baby is born, the baby is executed after birth, is unacceptable, and almost everyone agrees with that. My view is now that we have abortion where everybody wanted it from a legal standpoint, the states will determine by vote or legislation or perhaps both, and whatever they decide must be the law of the land, in this case, the law of the state. Many states will be different. Many will have a different number of weeks, or some will have more conservative than others, and that's what they will be. At the end of the day, this is all about the will of the people. You must follow your heart or, in many cases, your religion or your faith. Do what's right for your family and do what's right for yourself. Do what's right for your children. Do what's right for our country and vote. So important to vote. At the end of the day, it's all about will of the people. That's where we are right now, and that's what we want, the will of the people. I want to thank the six justices, Chief Justice John Roberts, Clarence Thomas, Samuel Alito, Brett Kavanaugh, Amy Coney Barrett, and Neil Gorsuch, incredible people, for having the courage to allow this long-term, hard-fought battle to finally end. This 50-year battle over Roe v. Wade took it out of the federal hands and brought it into the hearts, minds, and vote of the people in each state it was really something. Now it's up to the states to do the right thing. Like Ronald Reagan, I am strongly in favor of exceptions for rape, incest, and life of the mother. You must follow your heart on this issue, but remember, you must also win elections to restore our culture and, in fact, to save our country, which is currently and very sadly a nation. He does sound like he's AI. Am I wrong? He is definitely on Ozempic. In decline. Our nation needs help. It needs unity. It needs us all to work closely together. Democrat, Republican, liberal, conservative, everyone. We have to work together. We have to bring our nation back from the brink. And that's where it is. It's at the brink. And we will. We will do it. I promise you, we will do it. Always go by your heart, but we must win. We have to win. We are a failing nation, but we can be a failing nation no longer. We will make our nation great. We will make our nation greater than ever before. Thank you very much.